just remember this one thing. You are prey. You are easy to eat, easy to find. You do not run very fast. And so if you're dangling your feet or your legs outside, an animal that may find you appetizing may take a bite out of you. In this video, we're going to be covering 14 rules that you should be careful about when going out on a safari so that you stay safe and you avoid any incidents or accidents. So rule number one, you should never get out of your safari vehicle when you are on safari. The reason for this is that you are out in the wild now, and you are very likely to encounter issues, um, animals that are coming very close to your vehicle, animals that are going to be very curious about what this is. And so if you're get, going to get out of the vehicle, you're going to be viewed as one of the prey. And the thing about it is that in the vehicle you're going to be in, you will not have an armed guard. Unless you request for one, which you'll need to pay for, you'll not have an armed guard that will help to protect you in case something bad happens. And so for that reason, you need to be careful to make sure that you never leave that vehicle until you leave that national park or unless you're told it's safe to do so by your tour guide. And your tour guide is usually the, the driver who is driving you around. So listen to them, follow their instructions, and you're going to stay safe. Okay, so rule number two, you should not carry a drone or flight within the national park. If you're going to an African safari, do not use a drone. By using a drone, many animals are going to be startled by them. For instance, let's say you're, drive, you're flying past some elephants. It's very easy or uh, like a herd of wildebeest. It's easy to startle them and start a, stamp a stampede, which can either one, injure people around you or cause damage or injury to the animals themselves. They also create more stress in the animals than, than expected and so you should not fly drones. Now the penalty for this is usually high. Sometimes you can get your drone taken away. You can be fined heavily for that. So do not fly a drone inside the national park. It will get you in trouble. So just avoid it. Number three, you should keep your mind open when you are in an African safari. Now the reason why you need to do this is because African safaris are going out to the wild. It's not so much of a zoo more than it is a wilderness. And so you'll notice, I, I'll post a video um, and you'll find it in linked above. In that video, we went and I think it's either there, one of those places. We went out for a tour drive and that tour drive lasted about four hours. I was hoping to see at least one big cat. I thought I would find elephants um, no, actually not elephants. I thought I would find lions and you'll notice that I like I talk to the guard and they say that they are lions on a particular site. Now we went out looking for those lions for four hours. We did not see any of the big cats. Now that's the thing. When, you, when you're in Africa, you need to keep your mind open, especially in the national park, because there are animals you're going to hope to see, which you will not see. There are animals which you didn't think you'd see, which you will. And so keep your mind open because you are going to find some unexpected things. And if you are really close if your mind was really close that i must see lions today you'll be disappointed and not find like you seeing like let's say a leopard which is really rare you may actually be feel disappointed by spotting a leopard which you'll be really lucky if you spot a leopard if you are just hoping to see um if you're just hoping to see a lion rule number four you should never dangle your legs or your limbs outside of the vehicle. Now, this is related to the rule number one that we had talked about before. And the reason for this is when you dangle your limbs outside, now again, the prey, uh, you are prey. Just remember this one thing, you are prey. You are easy to eat, easy to find, you do not run very fast. And so if you're dangling your feet or your legs outside, an animal that may find you appetizing may take a bite out of you. In the parks that you're going to be going to, the vehicles that you'll use have a cutout top that allow you to stand and be able to see the vehicles, uh, the, the, uh, the animals around you. So that's something that you, is, is a relief, meaning that you'll not get too hot inside that place and you'll be able to sort of like get out and see things around that. So make sure you do not dangle, you do not dangle your limbs. Rule number five. You should always carry your identification. Carry your ID, especially if you are local, if you lived in that area for a while. Now, if you are a local, you've probably already gone to a national park and you probably already know these rules, but always carry your ID. And if you are going to come as a local and you want to live in this place for a while, make sure you try and get a non-resident ID because that will help you pay lower fees in the national parks. Now, 
us locals for instance i am kenyan and so when visiting the national park i pay way less than what a traveler from outside the country would and so by showing your identification you're able to make sure that you pay better fees than somebody else who is coming from abroad now again if you don't have an identification you just have your passport remember to always carry your passport if, especially if your hotel is outside of the national park make sure that you carry your passport with you because that's going to ensure that you are able to show where you're from they may refuse to give you entry if you do not show your id all right rule number six use your card so carry a card that you can use like a credit card that you can use that is approved for international transactions this is because the card is something that you're going to use to gain entry into the national park the reason for this is that they do not accept cash um, you'll notice in the same video that I was recommending that you watch now link is either in the description below or in one of those places up there I was trying to get into Nairobi National Park. You'll notice that I went there with cash and I was unable to gain entry into that national park with cash because I needed, they don't accept cash. They only accept either credit card or M-Pesa. M-Pesa is the way we transact here within the country. It's a mobile based transfer platform, really cool. You can check that out. And I, I think I've linked a few videos in the description below that talk about it from this channel, but they couldn't accept cash. They only accepted either card payments or M-Pesa payments. So make sure that you have a card, a card that you can be able to use for international payments. So let's say if you're traveling, um, if you're traveling to Kenya, for instance, make sure that you notify your credit card company to expect charges to be drawn from that card so that you do not get frustrated when trying to gain entry into the national park. Rule number seven, in case something happens that is scary, let's say an animal comes too close to the vehicle uh, or like some incidences where like cheetahs climb up into the vehicle, do not panic, do not shout, do not scream, do not make any sudden movement because this will startle the animal and that's not something you want. The tour guides that you're going to be with are experienced and they know what's going on. So they'll tell you what you need to do. So make sure you make very slow movements, especially if you're very near um, like large animals like elephants and so on, so that you do not startle them and do not run away. Do not like run away because by running away, they, the instinctual thing for animals to do is to run after you and they may, they may stomp over you when trying to run away. So make sure that you remain cool, calm and collected and listen to your instructor, the person who is driving you, your tour guide. They are going to be quite a salvation to you. Rule number eight, do not feed the animals. By feeding the animals, you'll start creating a dependency on those animals, especially for monkeys. You may think that giving a monkey a banana may be a good idea, but if they get used to that, now places like Nakuru National Park, now I have a video for that as well there. Um, when we went to Nakuru National Park, there was this big sign that said, do not feed the baboons. Um, and do not get near them because baboons can get extremely aggressive and they're actually one of the most dangerous animals in the park. You may not think that they are dangerous, but they're extremely dangerous and they are omnivores. And so they can attack you if they feel that there's food within your vehicle. And so again, that, that situation has been created because there are people who feed those animals and they start developing tendencies that are not normal, influenced by human behavior. So do not feed the animals. Rule number nine, do not ever chase after the animals. Let's say you're driving, let's say you're in Kruger National Park and they allow you to do a self-drive. Do not chase after the animal that you're trying to, to, to view because by doing that, you may end up either one, injuring yourself by, by, by an accident or two, injuring the animal, which is, is something that would be really unfortunate because you shouldn't you just shouldn't so do not chase after the animals if the animal is running away then just let it go you'll get another opportunity to see another one they are, most likely there are very many within that environment and you'll, you'll get another chance so don't take the risk to chase after the animal rule number 10 do not litter do not litter within the national park because it creates issues if you litter you're going to create um, a bad environment obviously create a bad environment for for the animals and that's not nice now you may you may ask yourself Anthony you're telling me not to litter yet Africa is full of litter yes true like when you come to Kenya many African countries are full of litter and that's really unfortunate but within the national parks themselves they try to keep them really clean and so since it's, it's such a vast place do not litter it's not good for the environment it's not good for the animals so please don't do it please Okay, rule number 11, 
use by the way i have a list right below here so if you notice my eyes going down <laughs> that's what's happening so rule number 11 use your judgment when driving now something you need to be careful about is when you're coming in africa there are roads that are sometimes very rough and let's say if you're driving yourself you need to be careful and use your judgment if you see a part of road that seems not really safe let's say it's it's been the rainy season and there's been a lot of rain that has made the roads flooded if you find a patch that seems like it's completely submerged, make sure you stop, check the depth if you can, or try to go back and use a different route. Because if you get stuck, especially in very large national parks, it may take a really long time before someone comes and helps you. And it may not be a very enjoyable safari for you if you get stuck. So when you're on an African safari and you're doing a self-drive, make sure that you use your judgment and be careful on those roads because they are not obvious and again you may probably just be used to driving on asphalt and if you are driving on like maram is different so be very careful about that do not over speed do not over speed when you are in the national park now driving too fast now this relates to like using your judgment driving too fast endangers the animals but may also put you in trouble because especially if you're driving on gravel it's 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 a gravel road and so if you're driving on that you may easily find yourself in a ditch if you're driving too fast but more importantly you may injure the animal so be very careful not to drive past the speed rule number 13 do not drive off the road now, if you're going to be going on an African safari and you are near um, like very close animals, then that's perfect. But sometimes they are usually far away. And if animals are that far away, you may be tempted to drive towards where they are, but there may not be a designated path for them. And so this creates a problem because you want to get close to the vehicles, but it's not allowed. So that, here's the thing. You're not allowed to do so because it damages the environment when you drive on places that are not designated for driving. And so avoid driving off the road. Now, you may get fined if you do this. Um, and so one of the ways of solving that is carry a camera with you, a camera that has a really good zoom lens. I've linked uh, one in the description below. Actually, I've linked two in the description below. The first one is one that you can buy from Amazon. The other one is lens rental. Lens rental allows you to spend little amount of money in renting camera gear that is worth thousands of dollars. And so it will be a saving for you to like use that if you're not going to be using uh, that kind of equipment for a very long time. The last rule is that you should not shout, especially when you're trying to attract animals. If you're trying to get animals' attention, don't shout at them. Because by shouting at them, you're actually going to be like disrupting their natural habitat. If you enjoyed watching that video, I think you really enjoyed this one of me in Nairobi National Park. I went there a couple of months ago and I really learned a number of lessons which apply to what we've learned today about the different rules that apply in the National Park. So if you're interested in watching that, here's the video right here.